From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi, dear listeners, and welcome back to Ropecast, and welcome back, Roger Charlton. Hi. Hello, Peter. It's good to have you back. I mean, it was fun with Bobby doing this mini-series about child-directed speech, yeah. but of course, I'm very, very glad to have my regular partner back as well. Well, it's good to be back in the studio with you. Great, great, great. Did you listen to the podcast oh, I yes, did yeah. with, uh, with Bobby Pernice? Yes. I have an idea. That was very much language directed at very small children. Yeah, basically infant-directed yes, yeah. speech. What about taking it a stage further, and that is when children reach the age of maybe 10, 11, mm -hmm. they start to get interested in language play. Language play. Words that sound the same. Uh-huh. Uh, words that have multiple meanings. Like in, also in rhymes? And rhymes, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, and tongue twisters. Tongue twisters. Those are the little, basically, rhymes or, or sayings that are very, very hard to pronounce. Exactly. Okay. Well, I don't know all that many in but, English. But you know one or two? I guess so. I'd have to think. What about, um, there's an American one, isn't there something about a woodpecker? No, not wood. Woodchuck. Yes. I, I know that one. I think I can even do it. Wait. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck would chuck wood? Well done. I don't think I can do that. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> And actually, there's a grammar error in that because you have a wood in the if sentence. Uh-huh. But it... <laughs> But lots of people do that anyway. Yeah. Don't <laughs> But that's the one I can do really well. Yeah. It's American. I didn't know yeah. that. It's only American. Well, I think so. I don't think we use that term woodchuck yeah, in that's Britain. A, it's a wood... Pecker, I yeah. think you say, that's the bird that makes holes into trees yes. to build his nest. You hear them from a distance. Yes, right, right. Do you know one that starts um, Peter Piper? Peter Piper, something with pickles or something? Y yes, you're getting there. Uh, yeah, but I don't, I, I don't think I can do it completely. I'll try, slowly. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's one that what's children... A, what's in, a peck here? Peck is a measure, an, an old measure. Ah, okay. It's not really used anymore. That's actually a characteristic of those tongue twisters, that they're pretty old yes. and they contain vocabulary that you would not necessarily use today. That's right. The, the same with a lot of nursery rhymes. Yeah, right. Yeah. But children don't really care, do no. they? <laughs> no. For them, it's all new anyway. Exactly, yes. And it sounds good, it rhymes uh -huh. or it... Um, yeah has what we call alliteration, that is words starting with the same sounds, yeah. Peter Piper. Right, right, and that's what makes it hard to pronounce. Yeah. You got any yeah. other ones? Maybe I know one or two more. Um, there's one that is very British. It mentions a Scottish town, mm -hmm. Leith. Leith. Which is written L-E-I-T-H. Okay. The Leith police dismisseth us. The Leith police? No. <laughs> <laughs> The Leith police dismisseth us. Oh, you now. See? You see how hard that is. Yeah. What about the dismithed? Yeah, that's, that's an old form, which we, you don't find in modern English grammar at all. How old is that? Well, that, that was still around in Shakespeare's time, but has disappeared since then. So during what we call modern English period. Is that what the S came out of? The well, S of the, the... the S really has a different origin. Uh -huh. So they were okay. competing forms. Okay. Well, but that's a hard one for me. Yes. I mean, like all Germans, the TH can be a problem. Yeah. And there's one I learned from my mother. I don't think it's very well known. But this comes from the days when it was necessary to repair things mm -hmm. rather than buy new ones. <laughs> <laughs> and people would go around repairing pots and pans. Right. You know, because these were important. These were kitchen mm -hmm. implements Intensive, you needed. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, this is question and answer. Uh-huh. Are you copper-bottoming them, my man? No, I'm aluminium, mum. Oh, my God. Are you copper-bottoming them? Man? Man? No. No, I'm aluminiuming them, mum. I'm aluminiuming <laughs> Okay, listeners, um, we will put all of those on our website, yeah. www.ropecast.de. And you guys can have a go. And Let, let's, let's finish with one that is just slightly easier. Okay, then, we'll put that on the website as well. And then our listeners can try this for themselves. Okay. 
Which wristwatch is a Swiss wristwatch? Which wristwatch is a Swiss wristwatch? Yeah, that's a little bit easier, but still, it takes some getting used to, doesn't it? It does. So they'll all be on our website, folks, and we'll say goodbye. But if you want, you can send us your own tongue twisters that maybe we haven't even heard of. Maybe there are some Australian ones out there that we don't know yet, oh. and we'll put them on the show. You can also even send in a sound file where you pronounce it. Bye, and be sure to tune in next time for Ropecast. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.